everybody. Welcome to The Remedy. Hi, I'm your host, Tony Pantelresco, and you're listening to us live on the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network. We can access the show by typing in www.themicroeffect.com. Then click on the appropriate links, the chat room links. Come on in, make friends, get acquainted, solve some issues, save the planet, brainstorm, cooperate. I'm also published at several different locations throughout the internet, bluesky.com. Uh, Brian396.com, GadCanada.com, and throughout the internet you'll find me somewhere, someplace, somewhere. <laughs> I'm also a podcast at Podbean, and depends on Podbean.com. So feel free to access me in any way, shape, or form to get whatever information you need to help you get through the day. Um, I got a variety of different things I want to talk about today. Um, it's um, it's one of those you know you get a weekend and you get you kind of. Um, collect a lot of data and have a chance to go through it and you see a lot of things that are happening it's like oh where do you begin <laughs> what do you want to talk about today you know and um i figured i'd start on the terahertz be- oh great anyway yeah yeah i did see that somebody sent that to me i i have been in contact with uh, uh well, i'm not sure she calls herself sister Carrie Burner anymore I think her name you know she calls herself something Carrie Cassie or no Carrie Carrie Burner whatever um yeah we talked and um we're on this pretty well on the same page about the whole nano she's pretty well up on what's going on she knows pretty pretty good on what we're dealing with here and the, and the extent and the um intensity of nano poisoning uh you you know we have to look at this a little bit more in how it's operating. Someone sent me an article about light and how light could possibly be a means of destroying the nano. Nano feeds on light, sound, all kinds of energy patterns. And as I, we stated before, Brian 396 and I have stated before that you cannot create a direct assault on any form of nanotechnology because after, about, after the third assault, it will morph it will change, it will shift, it will become completely different. It won't even resonate at the frequency it initially resonated at. It becomes a completely different animal. So I explained to her that laser can crack carbon nanotubes, can crack it. Doesn't mean it shatters it, it can crack it, and some parts may come undone. But the thing about carbon nanotubes and a lot of nanotechnology, it can have a self-repairing, self-assembling, and self-replicating Technology. So even if they do get damaged, they're by design uh, ready to replicate, repair, and continue to follow their paradigm. So you have to turn off the program. And that's what we've tried to show with some of the technologies that we've shared with everybody, that you've got to turn off the program, and then you have to detox the stuff out of the system. That's about the only way that I see it coming, uh, going on at the time. It seems like no matter what I read in regard to nano, Nano poisoning, nanobiology, nanobiotech, doesn't matter what you read on it, it all works out the same way. You first have to disengage it from its assembling program. Uh, um, I was reading something on sound, how they're using sonification to um, create a dispersion of nanoparticle, carbon nano uh, in certain technologies today or in certain uh, manufacturing practices today. But they have to use a form of sonification to create a concentration uh, in their assembly because it's not a very good water-soluble mixture. It doesn't work well in solvents either. In fats, it barely works, but it has to have the sound in order to create the molecular uh, inter- integration. In other, they're, crea- they're creating a liposome is what they're creating, or hydrogel. So in order for it to be able to embed and to be able to uh, form some kind of substance. And that's here and lies the problem. When that happens and it causes that kind of concentration and it gets into the body, it, the body doesn't recognize it. It goes into the cells, goes into the tissues, goes, it goes directly to your uh, genetic code. It embeds itself in the spine, in the brain, and then you have problems. I would probably attest that probably 99% of the health issues that we're suffering from today stem way back from 1960 when they started initiating the nano nano uh, into the food supply way back then and the further back you go in researching some of the stuff uh, the more you begin to realize they already had a lot of technology even as far as a hundred years ago 
they started exper experimenting and initiating a lot of this stuff even way back then. So this is why I say anybody born in the 50s, you have about 55 to 60 years of accumulation in your body. Anybody born after 1986 basically has no food supply safety whatsoever and has had this in the tech in this food supply at, at that point over uh, 25 years. So it's going to be very difficult for you, anybody to get you, give you a proper diagnostic in regard to your health. They can tell you you've got a violation going on or you got yeast infection, autoimmune disorders, uh, digestive disorders, skin disorders, cancers, autoimmune breakdown, you know, respiratory breakdown, uh, uh, skeletal issues, you know, whatever. You know, they can tell you that you've got these things. But they can't tell you where you got them from. How did this happen? How did this, how did this initiate? What caused this to happen? See, it's, very, it's a vagary to say that pollution caused a problem. Okay, pollution does cause a problem. But what pollutants are causing the problem? And how are they causing the problem? See, this is something they don't tell you. This is something that's all that's left out of the equation. This is something that, you know, is like, well, you're taking for granted, okay, we got a smokestack out there pumping out whatever. We don't know. Cars are driving, emitting all kinds of emissions. They're also on the nanoscale. Trucks as, as well. Uh, planes, helicopters, motorcycles. We're exposed to a lot of nanoparticles we're not even consciously aware of. And then when you start going into the food stores and the grocery stores, which are now also spraying nano in the harvesting of the crop, glyphosates in the harvesting of the crop, whether they're irrespective of genetics or uh, non-genetics or GMO, non-GMO. And this all has an accumulative effect because you don't get rid of these materials until you actually extract them out. Until you start detoxifying on a regular basis. Um, when we're looking at um, when we're looking at the whole paradigm here, frequency activation, nano saturation, uh, genetic, um, uh, what do you call that? Um, taking away your defenses, you know, disarming, genetic disarming, uh, you know, immune, immune suppressing technologies that allow all these things when you do all these things allows all this to come about and take place you are in a you are in the crosshairs here and there is no exception everybody has some some form of this it's just a matter of when uh, you get activated and the level of saturation before it happens it's uh, it's it's going to be inevitable and the younger you are the higher the probability that you've already started showing signs. Uh, somebody contacted me a little while ago and he said they had a child, a baby, not even a, a year old, was already showing signs of, gene of um, geometrical patter patterns forming on the stomach. Not even a year old. Okay, So we're talking now basically a hyper, hyper shortened lifespan is what we're talking. If the nano is that saturated already in the digestive system and already in the intestinal tract, this is going to further cause major dilemmas and problems for the children in that realm and that in, who are showing those signs. And again, the detoxification is going to be a difficult one to do for a child that's one years old because children need to take in nutrients so that their DNA can grow and their genetic code can again mature. Uh, so taking things out of a child, you have to make sure if you do any form of light detoxification, you're going to use like things like pectin, you're going to use things like uh, maybe charcoal, you may, you're going to maybe use things like um, mild or diluted forms of EDTA, uh, nothing really harsh. Uh, and then you're also going to start looking at putting back into the child the things that may not be there, minerals, bacteria, culture, you know, and so on. Um, this is really an alarming thing and you're going to see more and more children showing signs. My emails grow daily with people contacting me all over the planet and now it's telling me that after years and years and years and years of going to medical people, getting all these drugs, medications, vaccines, shots, 
uh, salves, whatever, creams, lotions that the medical field has given. Uh, in general, nothing's working. And so when they start hearing that maybe a frequency could be activating some of this, they see this. When they see that the, um, the uh, impact of what's going on in their DNA and nothing is fixing it, they're beginning to get they're getting it they're beginning to see it they're seeing the patterns now they're building their buckets now they're building their triangles now they're looking for any other information they can get um, I don't know if they're gonna be robot babies or not Starfire I really don't know I don't know what they're going to be I mean I don't even know if they're gonna live long enough to be anything other than raw D, uh, raw DNA material for artificial intelligence I really don't know I mean we've never it's, this has happened before, I am sure, but I don't know. I don't have enough. I haven't found any information yet. Haven't delved that far into it. I've been sort of um, diverted on so many different levels, and, and, and my education is constantly expanding. And um, I don't know what we're going to produce here. I have no idea. Uh, you know, when the children, when you know, when when the seed and the egg are are. Um, combining and the seed is loaded with the nano and whatever nano programming is there the egg is also loaded with nano and whatever nano programming there is there it's attaching itself to the uterus or uterine lining and again the uterus is also loaded with nano the blood has it in it the food that the mother is going to eat has it in it so as the cells split so does the nano so I have no idea what we're going to be seeing in the future um, how about nursing the baby if mom eats and detoxifies like it? That may help. And again, the mom is going to definitely have to be very careful what she consumes. If she's reckless and starts eating the breads, the pastas, the cereals, the rice, the corn, the soy, um, start using omega-3 fats thinking that the child is going to get the DHA from that perspective, uh, the it's just going to keep on transferring over to the child. Um, if moms are going to be breastfeeding, they should be using things like full-fat yogurt, full-fat kefir, uh, full-fat ricotta, full-fat cottage cheese. They might definitely need to be taking more iodine. They definitely need to be taking more copper, more zinc, more manganese, more selenium. They need to sustain the fortification of these minerals into the child so that the child's immune system has a chance of fighting off whatever uh, may assault its DNA. Selenium protects the DNA, so does iodine, so does zinc in small amounts. So if the mom is getting that, that too will transfer over to the child. Any protein uh, that she consumes, she wants to keep it as clean as possible, things like gelatin, a good clean whey that doesn't have any excipients in it. Uh, we found one here in Canada called Lean Fit. You can't, it's not sold in the United States. It actually might not be sold anymore in Costco either because I think everybody bought it and, and they sold out. Uh, but anything like that you might want to utilize. Um, collagen proteins are good as well. Again, they will be cleaner and refined. Um, eggs, egg-based proteins. Now, always remember the food supply will have been compromised. So whatever the mom eats, she's going to have to take the same neutralizing components that anybody else would eat so that it can bind with whatever is going inside the digestive system so that it can pass through the mom so that the child will, get minim will have minimal transference as much as possible. I would even give the mom colostrum. You know, get some colostrum going into the system. Get some uh, even transfer factors if you can afford it. If you can find a company that is non-MLM. You know, that's the problem with some of these products. They've got good products, but they're a multi-level marketing, and they cause a lot of problems. They're, they're, just, a, they're just crappy companies to deal with, and I don't even like them. Um, so, again, you know, anything the mom can do to continue sustaining and supporting the digestive system of the child that's where the DNA is going to be at its weakest that's where everything in the child's brain or mind develops is down in the gut that's where everything is being processed to be converted so that the body can utilize it utilize this so these are things you want the mom to have you know butter 
for sure, ghee for sure, MCT oil, coconut oil. And that's another thing a lot of you have been sending me now that the, the media now is saying to you, some doctors have come out saying that coconut oil is poison. So I've been getting emails, Tony, have you read this? And then I tell people all the time, why would you believe these people? You know, back in the 50s, they said the same thing. And then about 1970, 1980, they said, no, the coconut oil is actually good for you. And that we needed to saturate fat. 